Assalamu alaikum and good morning everybody. Today we are going to start a new topic which is the induction motor. The induction motor or in general the induction machine can be operated as either a motor or a generator. The majority of the applications operate the machine as a motor instead of the generator. In this course we will just be focusing or studying on the induction motor. So induction motor is the second type of rotating machines that we are going to study in this course. The first type is of course the one that we have seen earlier which is the DC machines. The major difference between the DC machines or the DC motor and the induction motor is the source that is fed to this machine. In DC motor, we fed the motor with a DC power supply. However, for induction motor, we fed the machines with AC power supply. So when we talk about the AC supply, we have two variables which describe the supply, the frequency and the magnitude. In this course, we will just be focusing on the steady state behavior or the steady state model of this induction motor. What does it mean by steady state model or steady state behavior of this induction motor? It means that the behavior of the machines when the frequency or the magnitude of the AC supply does not change with time. The model will only valid under the steady state behavior of the machines, which means that under the transient state in which the frequency changes with time or the magnitude changes with time, the model that we are going to develop for this induction motor is not going to valid. In terms of the voltage supply, the induction motor can be classified into two types, the single phase induction motor and the three phase induction motor. Single phase induction motor is typically used for low power applications such as home appliances, fans, blowers and so forth. On the other hand, the three phase induction motor is typically used for higher power applications such as that are used in factories, industries, traction drives and so forth. Both of the single phase and three phase induction motors can be classified in terms of the rotor construction. It can be either a squirrel cage or a wound rotor. In squirrel cage induction motor, the rotor is made of bars of conductors. On the other hand, for the wound rotor, the windings on the rotor is exactly the same as the winding on the stator. In our course, we will be concentrating or studying on the three-phase and both squirrel and the wound rotor type. However, emphasis is going to be given to this squirrel cage type. Now let's look at on the constructions of the induction motor. What is shown here is a three-phase induction motor. Like any other rotating machines, the machines are made up of two parts. The stator, which is the non-moving part, and the rotor, which is the rotating part. The three phases on the stator are labeled as A, B, C. Phase A, phase B, and phase C. The separations between the windings of each phase is 120 degrees. What is shown in this diagram here is the two pole machines, which means that the electrical angle is going to be the same as the mechanical angle. In practice, the stator winding is not going to be concentrated as shown in this diagram here. Rather than concentrated, the winding for each pole is going to be distributed into several slots. The angle between the coil sides for example, A and A prime can be less than 180 degrees. What is shown here, the coil sides are separated by 180 degrees. If it is less than 180 degrees, we call it a short pitch or fractional pitch or corded winding. What is shown in this diagram here is a squirrel cage type rotor. The small circles shown in this diagram represents bars of conductors embedded in rotor's surface. Let us consider only phase A with side coils A and A prime. The dot here represents the current going out of the board whereas the crosses here represents the current going into the board. If we have a coil which spans 180 electrical degrees apart then 
as we excite this coil, there will be flux produced. If we assume that the permeability of the core, which is made of ferromagnetic material, is much, much larger than the permeability of the air, then we can assume that all of the MMF drop will appear across the air gap. In other words, the reluctance of the core is basically zero compared to the reluctance of the air gap which means that the MMF or the flux produced in the air gap is going to have a shape of a square as shown here. The square wave flux shape here is not good for torque productions because the flux contains space harmonics. The fundamental component is shown here, but on top of this fundamental component, there will be harmonics, the third harmonics, the fifth harmonic, the seventh harmonic, and so forth. These harmonics will cause torque pulsations to the machine. So what we want is to have a flux produced in the air gap to have a shape which is closer to the shape of the sinusoidal in order to minimize the harmonics. We can do that by distributing the slots for each pole as shown here. What is shown here is that we have three slots per pole. So if we look at the MMF or the flux produced in the air gap, Every time we cross a slot, there will be a change in the magnitude of the MMF, which is equals to NC times I. For example, if we cross the first slot here, then as you can see in the waveform, there will be a drop of NC times I in the MMF. And as we move to the next slot, there will be another drop of NC times I in the MMF. On the other hand, if we cross the bottom slot, then there will be an increase in the MMF which is equals to nc times i. So as you can see that the fundamental component of this staircase flux or MMF which is produced in the air gap is going to be closer to the shape of the sinusoidal. The more number of slots we have, the closer is going to be the shape of the MMF produced to the shape of the sinusoidal. For example, in this particular diagram here, we have six slots per pole. And as you can see that the shape of the MMF produced is closer to the shape of the sinusoidal. Of course, in practice, we cannot have a true sinusoidal MMF because there will be a finite number of slots for each pole. And in order to produce the MMF wave, which is even more closer to the shape of the sinusoidal, we have to arrange the number of conductors in each slot to be sinusoidally distributed. Of course, in practice, this is not going to be easy and it is going to be a lot easier to place the same number of conductors in each slot. An ideal scenario is to have an infinite number of slots per pole to produce a stepless change in the MMF wave. On top of that, the number of conductors in each slot has to be sinusoidally distributed, which is shown in this diagram here. Now we know that if we excite a phase with a constant current, we will produce a space sinusoidal MMF in the air gap. What happens if the excitation current is a sinusoidal function of time? For example, let's assume that the excitation current is shown by this graph here. At t equals to zero, we have zero currents, which means that the MMF or the flux produced in the air gap is going to be zero. As the current increases, then the sinusoidal MMF will be produced in the air gap. And it will be maximum at t equals to t2. As the current reduces, then the MMF in the air gap will also reduce. Again, it will become zero at t equals to t4. As the current reverses at t equals to t5, then the flux or the MMF in the air gap will produce a negative sinusoidal shape as shown here. We'll have a maximum negative sinusoidal at t equals to t6. And finally, one cycle of the current is completed. So we can see that if we excite a phase with a sinusoidal current excitation, we will produce space sinusoidal standing wave MMF or flux in the air gap. If we excite the three phase windings on the stator with a balanced three phase sinusoidal excitation, each phase will produce its own MMF standing waves. 
and the combinations of these three standing waves will produce the rotating MMF in the air gap. Now let us look at on the animations of this rotating wave. This animation is developed by Professor Rias from the University of Minnesota as shown here. The animation is used to illustrate the rotating wave, which is a resultant of a three standing waves produced by the three phase windings on the stator. As you can see that the three phase windings produces the three standing waves, which is in red, green and blue. And you, if you add these three standing waves, you will get the resultant waves, which is moving or rotating around the air gap as shown by the black wave. 